Bellingham is one of the many communities in western Washington who have been proposed with the largest coal exporting project in North America. There are many concerns about the project brought forth by the community, including traffic congestion, health problems, and global impacts to name a few. The unique thing about a project this bad is that there's no shortage of reasons to hate it. And so, you know, for many people who live along the tracks, it's health concerns, it's traffic concerns, it's noise. Um, for people that don't, like me, um, it's the effect they'll have on those people as well as things like climate change. Um, the coal terminal is like 48 million tons of coal a year and translates to about 100 million tons of carbon dioxide being added to our atmosphere every year for the life of the terminal. Um, all of the coal that's going over there is going to be burned, so it's a, a very foreseeable impact on the terminal. A common question about the coal train issue is why and for what reasons is the project considered a bad idea? Uh, when we wrote our initiative uh, this year, there were 22 reasons uh, why the coal port was a bad idea, ranging from noise and disturbance and uh, health problems of people who happen to living, live right by the tracks uh, to the disruption to the remnant of the herring breeding grounds uh, that still lives uh, out at Cherry Point where the port is planned to be, uh, to the heavy freighter traffic in the Puget Sound and then on up to worldwide effects um, from uh, more global warming gases when the coals burned in, in Asia somewhere. Even if you consider these impacts to be minor, global warming is always a concern, especially when the proposed amount of coal to be exported and burned is 48 million metric tons per year. This is the main concern of such activists as Dana Lyons, a musician on what he calls the Great American Coal Train Tour. Uh, they want to dig up a colossal amount of coal, a huge, huge amount of coal in eastern Montana and Wyoming. And they want to ship that by train across Montana through Sandpoint, Idaho, down to Spokane, down to the Columbia River near Walla Walla, and out to Portland, okay? That leg of the tour gets 50 additional trains a day. Each train a mile and a half long. 50 a day, that is more than one an addition half hour on top of all the trains that they already have. Uh, the project proponents who have come forward, SSA Marine, the largest port operators in the world out of Seattle, um, working with Peabody Coal, the, one of the largest coal or privately held coal companies in the world, um, are bringing this forward for profit. They are bringing this project forward because they can make over you know, a couple billion dollars a year together uh, exporting coal through this coal port. They're not doing it for the jobs. If you wanted to do jobs, you would put in factories. You could put in warehousing has more jobs. Any other bulk terminal except for a coal terminal has more jobs per acre for this space. Aside from most of these potential jobs being temporary, as a result of the new terminal proposed by SSA Marine, other businesses in the area stand to take a deep economic impact. For example, a friend of mine has a, a, a guitar manufacturing shop. Actually, they, they manufacture the pieces for guitars and other instruments. They import the wood from Alaska. Every one of those logs has to come across the tracks at the port. Every one of his uh, employees has to cross the tracks. And when he adds up the cost of getting 25 employees to and from work, uh, getting those logs out of the port, He's talking about very real job impacts. This is one business that's 20 miles away from the tracks. We have 1,100 miles of tracks between here and the Powder River Basin. There are dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of businesses who will be impacted in the same way. When I was in Billings, I got caught behind a coal train on my way to a coal train meeting. I was both frustrated, but the humor was not lost on me, okay? 
So when these corporations talk about jobs, and they're talking about bringing your jobs here, what they're actually talking about are profits. They are talking about a couple hundred jobs, and they multiply it. They say that the people with those jobs, with their income, will create more jobs and have a multiplier effect. The reality is they're talking about maybe a couple hundred permanent jobs associated with the terminal. When you talk about the impacts of the terminal on crab fishing jobs, salmon fishing jobs, tourism jobs, including whale watching and orcas in particular, when you talk about the impacts on businesses that have to cross the, the, the railroad every day. The, the number of people who are involved in our effort has grown virtually exponentially. So it started out, there's like two people here in this office like worried about it, and now there are thousands all over the region turning out at various public hearings, and that will only grow. The growing size of the anti train movement has sparked numerous community organized groups and coalitions to work against it. One of these groups, known as Safeguard the South Fork, meet regularly to plan and organize events in opposition to the project. For many of them, they're concerned about coal train dust being deposited in their crops and their farms. What good is it to have an organic farm next to eight trains a day or however many will coming through here? For others, they may be concerned about cancer rates increasing because of the carcinogenic properties of coal dust. We gathered 10,000 signatures su supporting the uh, initiative. And all you had to do is say, this is about the coal trains, and people would say, where do I sign? Most importantly, we as a community need to ask ourselves if we support such corporations as SSA Marine to use our land to contribute to one of the world's most concerning future problems, global warming. Can we simply allow them to use our land so extensively for their own profit while simultaneously affecting our economy, our community, and most importantly, our planet? They seem to think it's okay, but the most important question is, does the community 